Star where you can go on past it, but it's not doing it yet. Well, it should have the standard germinate now mine has. So it depends where mm. you've let the seeds go mm. last year. Mm. If you pick up too much, you've got to do it. Probably know this is an amazing new fence yeah. that we got. Mm. And um, this originally had a totary hedge all the way around it, and it was my lucky day when I got the garden that the totary hedge was dying. I had nothing to do with it, <laughs> but I was so happy because the roots had come all the way out into the gardens. And I looked at it and I thought, this is really going to be challenging to try and get anything happening with this stupid hedge here. And it, it died out in big patches, and they said, we can't have that, we've got to take it out. <laughs> and then we designed the new fence and the designer that they used, I said, well, obviously I was meeting here and I said, well, I'll get a couple of things that I like and then you have what you like and we'll see where we're at. And she came in and she showed me a picture and then I showed her my picture and it was pretty much this. So we we're on the same page. Yeah. And I wanted something that was um, smart because this is like a European sort of designy type scenario. But I also wanted it that instead of blocking people out like what the hedge did, I wanted it open so as people walk towards it, you know, they could see kind of what was in here. Mm. And I can grow on there in the summer. I had sunflowers around all the edges and it looked beautiful. And that was a really nice thing, you know, to have sunflowers growing against. And I wanted the, um, I said to Jack Hobbs, our manager, I said, I want a wow factor in my garden and I reckon We've got those archways like that, mm. and as people walked in, that's what they were saying. And I was like, Yes, I've got the well factor. <laughs> right. But yeah. what I've got to, when you look through this one here, I've got the plant and I'm planting it um, this winter. It's going to be, I've got to measure it and make sure it's all good. But it's um, a lemon myrtle, which is a Bacchusia citadora. Um, so that's going to be through there. So hopefully, touch wood, in another couple of years, um, as you look through that window there you'll see the lemon myrtle so yeah I just picked that because I just think it's just a really beautiful tree so there's a myrtle rush around here it's salad growing I remember one year in winter yes. 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 but in here in our corner yeah. courtyard um, I wanted to show green crop every winter I try and put a green crop in because I think it's really important for visitors to um, understand the importance of having the green crop mm. and in the summer that's um, Jerusalem artichoke so they come up quite nice and tall and do their thing then they start looking a bit rubbish so chop them down with the weed eater and then put a bit of compost in that over it and sprinkle my green crop seed and now the mustard comes up looks nice and when that's finished and starts flowering chop that off weed eater and then the Jerusalem artichoke comes back up to it for the summer so it's just kind of just swapping one for the other but I've got an example for winter of a green crop and then I've got the Jerusalem artichoke in the summer which yeah it's not probably the most exciting plant but people um, are still interested in it and it's just colour in that sort of spot and the green mustard do you I just chop that off with the weed eater and I just leave it lying on top and then that just all rots down into the artichokes and then but these yeah. two um, gardens here, what I wanted to do in this garden is like I know I said on the brief I'm going to try and encourage everybody to grow fresh food for winter. Um, I came up with the idea for the summer, like I was trying to really think about engaging kids. So in the summer I did pizza and pasta gardens because I thought every kid that comes mm. in is going to like pizza. If they don't like pizza, they're going to like yeah. pasta. So I tried to theme gardens so that kids would be engaging with food. And um, we had World Pizza Day this year, so that was really good because my garden got put on our website for Botanic Gardens for World Pizza Day. But in the winter I thought I'm going to come up with two new ideas. So these two here are winter salad. And what I really wanted to do was show people that you can still have salad in the winter. Like I think it's still a really good thing to do. But you're not buying imported lettuce and capsicums and all the stuff that goes with it. So I tried to show a mix of cabbage, carrots, celery, corn salad, um, coriander, parsley, that one's got the mizuna, spinach, two lots of edible flowers and some more cabbage with some herbs. So sort of in um, what I'm trying to show people is don't be afraid to eat salad in the winter for the first thing. Um, 
by growing all these things here, you can use them for lots of other things in your kitchen, but this does make a complete salad if you were picking your corn salad leaves, using your cabbage, got all your herbs, grating your carrots, everything like that. So I'm sort of tried to show that there. And on this side is the same concept, but it's winter soup. So I just tried to show people kale, cabbage and turnips and carrots. So just if you want to have a winter soup garden, you can use it obviously for anything else, but just to theme those plants together to give an idea. Um, was kind of what I was hoping to do and it's only been planted for about I don't know, four or five weeks so it's got a bit further to go. What's in here again? Um, this one's got kohlrabi, celery, parsley, leeks, carrots, beetroot, cabbage, turnips which are nearly ready, that's a purple top turnip, kale, carrots, leeks, parsley. And those two gardens along the edge, oh. they're the edible flowers. It's not that exciting yet because um, the flowers have just been planted. There's some basics the like the harmeria, well. which is the pink on the side and the dianthus that are always nice. But in about another probably six to eight oh, weeks, yeah. all the snapdragons and the little bits and pieces, calendulas and stuff will all come up. And they're really, really yeah. pretty. Yellow. Yeah. Is that because there's water, too much water in this? Maybe. And yeah. also maybe quite too, um, too strong. Like, yeah, it's pretty pure. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But they'll these just have a dressing of compost on it and then I just um, dig um, the bottom of the bin. Yeah. Yeah. showcase to people what they should be doing when someone's taking it all yeah yeah so and i don't mind people tasting you know like leaves yeah. so that's fine but it's when they start pulling out whole oh oh it's <laughs> oh, <that's> me <laughs> it's really annoying but um that, sometimes that's just the joy of public garden and sometimes there are genuine and they take it's your best to take out the pollen but just in case anyone's allergic to you know, This is a new um, nasturtium I tried. Oh, I, really, I got reading, I like reading all the seed catalogues, I get all excited about yes. reading all these descriptions <laughs> and everything. So um, it said it was going to be called Purple Emperor. Purple's my favourite colour, and I was like, oh, that's got to be good. And um, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed because it's sort of like it's a washed out kind of red. It's not that purple, I actually like it, I think it's pretty. It's okay. It's gorgeous, but not But purple. it's not a purple purple. <laughs> which is um, Scott wildfire overnight and if they're easy to grow well that's a good thing for people beginning to garden to maybe mm. try mm. and they can get the confidence with having some success and then they can start doing a few other things so yeah I'm really pleased to rock it <clears throat> and it has these really cool beautiful bright red flowers it's really nice but um doesn't flower to probably spring and I had it there a couple of years ago when I first came to the garden and it died which I was a bit disappointed about and then all of a sudden that one and I don't want to move it just in case I jinx it and something goes wrong with it what mm. color flowers? Red. beautiful bright red skyrocket it's perennial, skyrocket. perennial. Yeah. Mm. but I'm just I'm not moving it because I just feel like yeah, yeah. I might lose <laughs> it again <laughs> so um, and I was so happy to have it back bit of, so. um, bit of in, uh, in garden conservation it's an in garden trial they used to do you remember? there's all my turnips they're growing on steroids <laughs> 